Hi friends, good day. Today, let us try to understand about what is PAG ratio, how to calculate PAG ratio, understanding the results of PAG ratio through this video. According to Robert Kiyosaki, people didn't like the idea of thinking long term. Many are desperately seeking short term answers because they have money problems to be solved today. Before we go in, please subscribe for more videos. Click the bell icon for updates. What is PEG ratio? A PEG ratio or price per earnings to growth ratio is a stock's price to earnings ratio divided by the growth rate of its earnings for a specific time period or over a period of time typically the next one to three years. The PEG ratio adjusts the original PE ratio by taking into account the growth rate in earnings per share that are expected in the future. The PEG ratio is used to determine a stock's value while also taking into account the company's expected growth and it is said to provide a more complete picture than the more standard PE ratio. This metric provides a much more informed view of a stock in relation to its earning potential. In general, the PE ratio is higher for the company with a higher growth rate. Thus, by using the PE ratio, it would make the high growth companies appear overvalued compared to others. So, it is assumed that by dividing the PE ratio by the earnings growth rate, the resulting ratio is better for comparing the companies with different growth rates. Finally, this metric allows the investors to get an idea about the stock's actual value like PE ratio does by also taking into account its growth potential. Therefore, for fundamental analysis, this PEG ratio plays an important role. Let's look into how to calculate PEG. Price per earnings to growth is equal to market price of stocks per share divided by EPS, the whole divided by earnings per share growth rate. For example, company ABC has recorded earnings of rupees 10 lakh in the financial year 2021. The market price of its share was rupees 10. It had a total of 1 lakh outstanding shares. Its EPS witnessed a 2% growth over the last year and is projected to grow by 2.5 for the next year. So EPS is equal to 10 lakh divided by 1 lakh which is equal to 10. PE ratio is equal to 10 divided by 10 which is equal to 1. PEG ratio is equal to 1 divided by 2.5 which is equal to 0 0.4. The company's growth rate estimates can be taken across different periods, but higher the number of years, the more there is a chance of inaccuracy in the results. The PEG for a given company may differ significantly from one reported source to another. Depending on which growth estimate is used in the calculation, such as one year or two year or three year projected growth. The accuracy of the PEG ratio depends on the inputs that are used to get the ratio. When considering a company's PEG ratio from a published source, it is important to find out the growth rate that was used in calculating the ratio. Understanding the results Using a PEG ratio along with the stock's PE ratio can tell a very different story than using the PE alone. A stock with a very high PE might be viewed as overvalued and not a good choice to buy. But calculating the PEG ratio of the same stock, assuming it has a good future growth rate estimates, can actually yield a lower number which indicate that the stock may still be a good choice to buy. Well, the opposite is also true. If we have a stock with a very low PE, we might assume that it is undervalued. However, if the company's future growth rate 
is not projected to be increased substantially, then we may get a PEG ratio that is high. Well, this indicates that we should not buy the stock. In theory, our PEG ratio value of 1 represents a perfect correlation between company's market value and its projected earnings growth. For example, if the stock had a PE ratio of 20 and the company projected its earnings to grow at 20%, this gives it a PEG of 1. If the PEG ratio is higher than 1, then it is generally considered as unfavorable, suggesting that the stock is overvalued. This tells that the market expects more growth than the estimate predicted or that increased demand for the stock has caused it to be overvalued. If the PEG ratio is less than 1, then it is considered better, indicating a stock is undervalued. This means that the market has underestimated the stock's growth prospects and value. As we use the other tools to conduct fundamental analysis, we are comparing the PG ratio to other ratios we have selected. If all the considered ratios are showing ratios that indicate undervaluation, it means that we have found a stock which is worth investing in. What are the advantages and disadvantages? The PEG ratio offers an indication whether the company's high PE reflects an overvalued stock price or is a reflection of favorable future growth prospects for the company. For low growth companies, the use of the PEG ratio is less appropriate. As large, well established companies offer little opportunity for growth, it is less appropriate to use PEG for these companies. The PEG is also less appropriate to use with small high-risk speculative companies that has a low PE due to their very low price, which is also accompanied by the high EPS growth caused by one-year doubling of the share price from very low level. The company's APS growth used in the PEG does not account for the growth of the company and has no correction for inflation. For example, if the company's growth and the inflation rate are equal, then it is not growing in real terms. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video and do share.